Welcome to Teaching Orchestra. Although the focus of Midnight Rain is on the texture, which involves mostly the bow, well, and some left hand pressure, there is some left hand technique. There are some fingerings and things that your students are going to need to get comfortable with. In my classroom, I don't pass out a scale book and I don't use it to teach scales and arpeggios. I think it's boring and my students really think it's boring. And I think what usually ends up happening, at least for me, when I you know, try to pass out scales and stuff and play off a sheet is everybody just gets bored and they just go through the motions and they're just putting fingers down. And we're not paying really close attention to things like pitch and left hand shape and all that kind of stuff. You know, I almost think that for a lot of my students, scales are a bit too complicated because what we're really focusing on are tetrachords. And if they can't play the tetrachord, they can't play the scale because a scale is just two interlocking tetrachords, right? So we work on finger patterns and I think that's the fundamental technique and once we get good at that then we can start addressing scales and then arpeggios are even more complicated than scales because they skip notes to confirm my theory in some of the all region auditions you know for middle school especially they require some scales as part of the audition and if you look at the scores on average the scale round is usually the lowest ranked again, on average, out of all the students, meaning that the students aren't really spending as much time on the scales as they are the excerpts, right? The, the concert pieces. So if you can pick concert pieces that have the scales, or in this case, uh, Midnight Rain that has the arpeggios, it's a way to get them to trick them into learning the arpeggios rather than teach them out of a book, which has mixed success. But if your students are playing arpeggios in class every day, maybe you don't need this video and maybe you can skip it. But some of these chords that are broken into arpeggios include 3-2 or 4-3 suspensions, which most of these scale books don't have. So if you look at the B section in measure 48, you'll see some variations of these in the first violin part. You know, you get a wider range of pitches in the inner parts, you get basically the, the root and the fifth, these patterns right here. And with the cello, you've got the uh, two, three suspension with the omission of the third in these chords. And if you wanna know why the cellos are orchestrated that way, go back and watch my last video. I go on a huge rant on physics and stuff and why that tends to be the orchestration of this sort of piece and this sort of tempo at this level. But I also have this teaching companion that's available on my website, teachingorchestra.com. And I make sure that you aren't just teaching the arpeggios for no reason. I link it to the concert music instead of some like hypothetical piece, like why are we doing this? Well, because one day you might have a piece with A minor. So this directly relates to the music. And so the students might engage with this more than they would a scale book. Most of your students want to just hurry up and get to the concert music anyway, so this might sell it to them a little bit more. So I teach this homogeneously, and I start just with uh, an octave at a time. We start just with the quarter notes, and then we add the eighth notes. Then, you know, we do the second octave of it. And I do A minor, G major, um, then we do A with a 2-3 suspension, and then we do A with the 4-3 uh, suspension. Then we do uh, the G major with the 3-2 suspension, and that pretty much covers everything. And, and you might be thinking, well, where's F? Well, we don't really get F very much in this section where we've got a lot of this stuff. Uh, we get it very, very briefly here. Um, but we primarily focus on G and A. So again, start slowly, slow it down and go note by note if you have to with intonation and left hand shape as your focus. And if you aren't getting better, flip back to the beginning of the teaching companion and make sure that you're going over the finger patterns. If they can play the minor patterns and the major patterns effectively, they should be able to play this. There's really nothing else in that section. There's no augmented patterns. There's no open patterns because we don't have the F on the E string. So major and minor patterns, if they can play that in tune, 
they should be able to play the arpeggios. If they're struggling with the arpeggios and the intonation, go back to the finger patterns and focus on that until they're comfortable. And then they've got that skill so they can play the arpeggios in tune. Your students are probably not gonna master arpeggios in one lesson and definitely not all five of them that are in the teaching companions. So go slowly, maybe do just one or two a day and build from there. Again, start with the quarter notes, get really good at that, and maybe try the eighth notes the next day. Um, you might not do it on the next day. It might take them a while, and there's no sense in going on until they have a really strong foundation, and then you can progress to the eighth notes. If your students get really good really fast, you can increase the complexity. You can go through the teaching companion again and start adding slurs, and then they'll have all the technique they need. You know, you could put the slur to bow to or whatever you want to do. You can change the rhythm around so that it matches the music better. But first, make sure they understand the notes uh, before you start playing around with it too much. Start simple and then make it more complex as they get more comfortable to give them an extra challenge. The other troubleshooting tactic that you might want to employ is when you think of it and, and you start playing in context and they're like, wow, they could play it well in the teaching companion, but then when they go back to the piece, it doesn't sound very good. Well, don't just ask the question, is it out of tune? Also ask the question, is it out of tone? And you might want to look at your group and see how they're playing this, okay? Are they playing this too close to the fingerboard? That's going to affect their tone, and it might sound really muddy, especially in the lower strings, especially in the lower tessiture of the lower strings. So on the C string especially, make sure they're playing close enough to the bridge. And you may also want to go back and review the finger building exercise, make sure they're using enough finger pressure. That's also in the teaching companion as well. And those fundamental techniques are gonna make a huge difference here in what your students are gonna be able to do. And it's gonna separate like a really clean, really expressive orchestra from an orchestra that sounds muddy. So in my next video, I'm gonna go over common problems that I hear when orchestras play Midnight Rain, and I hope to see you in the next video.